Okay, so far we have uh, subscribed uh, the uh, quick event of these three picture box, right? Okay, it's about the time that we uh, set the uh, variable and then counter uh, the win, uh, the one uh, loss and tight count for the game in order to display it on this label, right? So we kind of go into our code. So remember that uh, Visual Studio has uh, prepared and has defined a class form one for us. So right now, uh, if we want to set up the uh, counter, we should put in right here. So we can uh, use the uh, the code which has been used in console project. So let me uh, open uh, the. Uh, the program, the program of the console console project. So remember that we have defined one count, lost count, tidied count uh, in the uh, program class. But because the main function is static function, so everything should be specified with the static keyword to make this uh, variable appear as the uh, class scope variable. So right now we can copy it, this data. So we put in the uh, form one, so which means that we also define these three counters uh, in form one class. But this the uh, the application. Remember that uh, for win application, we do new form one. Uh, we create an object of form one uh, class to serve as the user interface. So. We we have object cell. So in this case, we do not specify this data as static. So this data will be belong to uh, the object cell. So right now we have one count, we have lost count, we have tidy count. So, oops, excuse me, not here. I uh, made a mistake. This is the uh, program. The CS or the uh, console project. So we need to go back to the form one class. All right. In form, so in form one class, we have passed in the, uh, the, the this this counter, but we do not specify this uh, data uh, static. So we delete the static keyword, which means that right now these three data are object scope. So once you new an object of form one class then this data belong to the object <coughs> so now we have this three color so we in this point we kind of add another function add a function to form one class so we may call it uh, the name show uh, or probably uh, bis display score or probably display it and Probably uh, just name the the function display current score. So since we try to define a function, so a function should have a function name and uh, a list of parameters. But we do not have any parameter requirements, so we have an empty pair of parentheses. And this function will return nothing. So you say this function will return nothing. We are going to simply update. And display current score. All right. So prepare body. So we cannot define a function without a keyword static, right? So which means this function is in object scope. And uh, if you did not specify public, which means this function is private. So if your function is private, then fine. You don't need to specify the private. So we leave that out. That means I have defined a, a function. The name is, is display current score void. <coughs> so this function is, is belong to form one class. The form one class do have an object, right? Have this guy, this object. This object, the name of this object is uh, we have uh, object. We have changed the name, right? So it's the label score. So we have a label score there. All right. So similarly, uh, let me close this program file. And uh, leave this program file there. Back to the form one that's here. So we try to display current scope. Once this function is is called, 
then this function is to update the label text, right? And that is the idea. We will try to update these are uh, the text properties of this label object. That is the purpose of for this function. So we prepare this function and then we will reassign the text property or label. So we special the name label L B uh, score, right? So L A B score is the name of this uh, label object dot text. Try to rewrite it. Rewrite it with a string. But we like to use sweet string or call formatted string. Right? Which is similar to the uh, Morgan.cs. So how can we write it? You see, console, in the console project, we uh, prepare a format, a, fo a format, formatted text, right? One, lost, tidied. So probably what just what we need to display just one rows and tight. Okay, fine. So similarly, prepare a string one, one count, right? So put a one count there. Two space, blank space, lost, tight. Okay, so since this is a this is a member function of this class. This, these are data member of this class. So every function can access its data directories. We do not need to special any accessibility. By default, they can be accessed by function. So we just put uh, one count there, lost count there, tidy the count there. That's it. So we kind of prepare a function, but right now uh, this function has not been called, has not been invoked. How can you know that? As you can see, zero reference, which means the code does not uh, invoke it yet. Where should we invoke it? You see, when user create a form one object, this form one function, this is a special function we call this function. Uh, within a class, if you see a function, uh, the function name is exactly the names of the class. That means this is a, spe a special function. Uh, it's a special function. Sometimes we call it a constructor. Uh, in, Ch uh, in Chinese, it's called Jing Go Tan Shi. Oh, simply that go Jing Go Zi. Okay, so when a pro uh, in program that says we kind of new form one, then the constructor will be invoked. So the constructor is the actual is the function prepared by the uh, designer. The purpose is try to initialize all the uh, related uh, user interface and data accessible the same. So up to this point, the uh, control has been uh, edited and initialized. So the last thing is right here. We well we kind of update update uh, display or label score. So how can you update it? Well, we can just simply call this function. So that means we prepare a function, and this function can be repeatedly called by other function. All right. So we try to invoke this one. So we call the function we I, we just prepare display. So once in thirty cents, uh, focus on your function. Yeah, since it's a function invocation, right? So we simply just type the left parenthesis and then uh, hit the tab key to access. So, when form one is constructed, the object is constructed. Everything has been initialized by this function. This function is prepared by the uh, Visual Studio, and then it will call our function right here. So let us 
make a uh, breakpoint right here. So this is the breakpoint position. So once you click it, you cancel that breakpoint. So we compile our code and uh, enter debugging mode. Well, let me uh, terminate it first. You see, let me terminate it first. Let me set a breakpoint right here. I mean, in the uh, uh, program that's in this line. So you can see the execution uh, procedure line by line somehow. So form one right here. And I also set a breakpoint right here. Okay, so everything will start from uh, from this, uh, this from this file. Okay, as you can see, our code is about to run, but no any windows appear, right? Okay, because uh, user interface has not been instantiated yet. So we are about to execute the new form one. So computer try to allocate a chunk of memory for your form one object. All right. So if I hit F11 key. We came to the form one class. So right now, computer will look into the content of form one class to see is there any uh, initial initialization data initialization. If you have, the uh, computer will perform the uh, data initialization first. So as you can see, one count has been executed, and those count has been initialized. Tidy the count has been initialized. So once all the initialization has been done, then the uh, execution will proceed with this uh, constructor. All right, so if I hit F11 key, okay, another one. This, this initialization has been special in the dot name, uh, dot designer, dot CS. So another one. Okay, so once every initialization has been done, we will enter the constructor function, constructor right here, form a constructor. All right, so if you hit the continue, then the next breakpoint is here. So we are about to initialize every user's control. Okay, if I hit F11 key, so it came to the form1.designer.cs. This file is maintained by the, uh, by the Visual Studio, so usually you don't need to bother about that. But since uh, constructor call this function, right? This function is prepared by Visual Studio. So everything will be created, will be instantiated, new, you see? And also, uh, Create a label, new a label, new a Google box, new a button. So every control object will be instantiated, will be created, which means that memory will be allocated for each object. Once they are allocated, once they are created, then that object can be used uh, to to uh, use for the user interfacing. All right. So line by line execution, right up to this point. And then so after the object has been new, has been newed, then the initialization, property initialization will be carried on. See, the original back color is in this way, ARGB, uh, alpha value, red color, uh, excuse me, green, blue. Oh, but right now, we kind of change it into the green. So back color is dark green, see, the value has been changed. Uh, you, as you can remember, original dark is none. Original dark is done, but we have changed it into the top, right? So dark has been changed. So everything specified in the uh, in the design uh, uh, windows has actually has been turned out to be, to has has been turned to be a programming statement right here within this initialize uh, initialization function initialize component. Okay, so you can hit F10 key one by one and execute the code line by line. Or probably if you don't need to stop in any statement, you let me just scroll to the end. So move your cursor to this line. Suppose we like the debugger to run the code up to this line. So you click on this uh, pop up button. So it's about the end of this function, right? So we hit F10 key, F10 key again. So right now this function has been executed completely okay so next line f10 again we called our function this is function just designed by us right 
So we try to enter this function. So I hit F11 key, F11 key. So came to this stack. And if I click on the continuous, then the next breakpoint will be stopped right here. So currently, as you can see, label score, what kind of content has been stored in text? Move your cursor to text. As you can see, originally, the name is label one, right? Label one. If you move your cursor to one count, one count, see, it's zero. Moving to the last count, the value is zero, zero. So once this line is executed by hitting the F10 key, move your cursor back to the text again. As you can see right now, the appearance of the label, the text property has been changed to one, uh, column zero, last column zero, title column zero, right? So, which means that uh, the label will show up the current score correctly, right? All right, so after debugging up to this point, everything is okay. So we hit the uh, continue button to let the code keep running. All right, so up to this point, it's here. But as you can see, tidy has been chunked out, right? I mean, chunked it. So I have better enlarge my windows a little bit. Oh, probably just uh, specify the font size a little uh, smaller. Okay. All right, so back to the design phase. So I kind of change the font size to a uh, smaller one, not 48, probably uh, 28. All right, sounds good. So let me start it again. So if everything is okay, the, you can remove the breakpoint, okay, and then hit continue. Again, there's breakpoint right here. So probably you will resume this breakpoint uh, later, and in this case, you can tempor temporarily uh, uh, remove the break uh, functionality for this breakpoint, okay? So let the code execute to the end. All right, so right now, one, zero, log zero, tidy is zero. All right, so seems okay. So right now, user can press his his hand, right? Okay, so once this button is hit, it's clicked, then we will generate a computer's hand, right? And uh, also decide who, who win the game and update the counter, right? That's the logical should be a carry on uh, on this button. All right, so let us go back to the... Uh, design mode so we click on this guy evaluate and then subscribe as click event right here double click it button evaluate click event double click it so we just did they will prepare a event handling function for us btn evaluate click so the first thing is that uh, we need to uh, press computer hand so how can you uh, make a Computer's hand. Well, we need we need the help of an object, run uh, object. So you can let us check. Uh, go back to the uh, console project. This is the console project, right? So we will need a random number generator. But in that time, this random number generator is a local variable. But right now, since random number generator will not be instantiated uh, repeatedly. So we prepare, we need a random number generator. And in this case, uh, we uh, go back to our form one class, form class right here. So in addition to the counter, right now, I will specify an object of random, uh, random class. So the, the name is random, R-A-N-D. Okay, so interesting is no this class because because this class is uh, is within this namespace system dot random. So since IntelliSense has highlighted this class name for us, we don't need to type the rest or uh, the rest character. So simply uh, type a uh, space blank space key random, and I call my random number generator. All right, so in uh, 
in specifying in specifying uh, member data or class, you can directly assign initialization right here, just like the here. You can specify initial value. So equal what new? We need to create an object or random class. So interested in knowing that well, this is your variable variable name, right? And uh, you uh, uh, you type the new operator. So once you once you type in a blank space, intelligence will pop out. So intelligence is knowing that well, the left hand side is an object or random class. So intelligence will focus on uh, has select this uh, class for for you. So we create an object or a class by invoking its constructor. So constructor is a function. So right now intelligence has highlighted this uh, class for us. So what you need to type is left parenthesis. Oh, okay. So random class has two as, uh, as we have been done uh, has done in console project, right? So two way we do not special any uh, any seed. So we hit tab key, create it. So right now, which means that your form one class do have an uh, objects or random class. The name is my random number generator. It has been. Uh, uh, created us when an object of form one is created, so everything is okay there. So in that case, we can use this object to uh, generate a random number for, for us, right? So how can you do that? So in this case, we need to have uh, well in in this function, right? So we will prepare we will prepare what we prepare a local variable, right? Int as you can see, I'm using in console project we have uh, within this main function we have a what we have a computer's hand we have a prayer hand right okay so uh, we have prayer hand we have computer hand so command is very simple command is int right so right here so back to our form one class uh, in this so we have computer hand right here. So zero stand for rock, one stand for pepper, two stand for thesis. So we have computer hand, and then we can computer's hand assign with uh, the return data value uh, from our random number generator. So I we will ask my random number generator help us invoke its next function. It's a function invocation, right? So type the left parentheses. And then actually, we will invoke the second invocation way. We specify a much more value. So this function after this function will return a random number, no equal, just smaller than this much more value. So if we specify three, there. So return the value just within zero, one, and two. So we have computer hands. How about prayer hand? Well, prayer hand, uh, prayer has been uh, because we are developing WinForm application, right? So prayer hand should be decided and determined when user click either picture box, right? All right, so we know that, so we should do it right here. But in in that case, because different kind of three function, right? This is these, these are three uh, member function. Uh, you cannot specify. You cannot switch that uh, I uh, well, we call string, right? Str in string. Uh, prayer hand. If if you specify prayer hand here, equal. It's a paper, right? Pa paper. That will be wrong. You see, if you specify local variable here in each. Uh, uh, even handle the function it's p this one should be the uh, rock right it's a rock image that should be the scissors in that case in that case prayers hand is a local variable of this function so only this function uh, is being executed then prayer hand do appear so in that case btn evaluate query founder cannot recognize cannot recognize prayer hand as you can see if we try to uh, get prayer hand, nothing came out. 
uh, Visual Studio or uh, IntelliSense is knowing that within this function scope, within this function scope, there is no any variable name called prayer hand. No. So in this case, we need to specify this prayer hand as a data member, not local variable. Okay, so we kind of define prayer hand right here, string. B L A Y E R hand without any initialization. It's okay. Prayer hand. So when user click on uh, this picture box, so if you handle the function right here, right? Right here. So we know that, okay, so up to this point, we change the image, right? We change the image. But right now, we will update. Within this one, you will update prayer hand. Set it to what? To paper. So we need to do it in this way. So this function is, uh, again, is a member function of form 1, right? Prayer is a data member of this form 1 class. So every function, every function can access uh, prayer hand, this variable. Okay. So paper click, set prayer hand to pay p. Similarly, so we set prayer hand Assign with a string R, raw, stand for raw. Again, here we set prayer hand S. So, not this one. Okay. So, right now, I mean, uh, when user click an image, right, a picture box, it's uh, if the picture is rock, then the prayer hand should be string R string p string s so everything is really there so up to this point prayer has specified a prayer hand there right and computer do have a computer hand appear here so right now we can evaluate who win or who who won right but before that since we have a computer computer hand create a generated by the uh, by the random number generator right so we should specify we should specify the image of this PCB computer to reflect what hand has been placed by the computer, right? So how can we specify that? We know that uh, PCB box, uh, PCB paper, the image is a paper, the image is a rock, the image is a thesis, right? So we can take advantage of using that. So, okay, so back to our code again, all right? We will try uh, display image on PCB computer. So you need to check the value, right? You need to check the value of computer hand. If it is zero, then we will display rock. If it is one, we will display paper image for it. Okay, so we will check if computer hand equal, equal, exactly equal what? Equal to zero because it's a numerical data int. So int value directed check the value with a uh, integer constant. Okay, if it's situation appear, we do this. Uh, we do this part. Else, else, if computer's hand equal one. Else. So the structure, if else, if else, structure is like this one. So if it is zero, then we will go to this part. If it is one, go to this part. Otherwise, otherwise meaning what? Meaning two, right? Because only three cases will be generated by the uh, random number generator. So in this case, it's zero, right? So zero stands for rock. So we will set computer's hand. We will change the image of this guy. This guy, the name is PCB computer. PCB computer dot image right assign with what which which one it's a it's a zero is a zero is rock right so rock image has been stored where has been stored in here PCB rock PCB rock dot image okay so if the number the, the the number of the computer hand is equal one, 
right here is equal one. Then we reset PCB computer image PCB one stand for paper. So PCB paper dot image. So we kind of copy the image from either one, put it to the uh, computer's hand. Okay. All right. So else PCB computer image assign PCB uh, because two. So in this case uh, two. This here. So just add a ju just add a, a comment to help you understand this part. So let's show with the PCB scissors dot image. Okay, so far, once user click on this button, computer will press his hand, and then we'll display image right here. All right, so let us just run our test our code up to this point. Okay, so user press hand, and then, so we set a breakpoint right here to let you catch up the idea. All right. Once you use so right now it's ready, right? Player has put his hand there. Evaluate. All right, code word as uh, so far, computer hand, the value is zero. So once we hit F10 key, then computer's hand, this time it's two. So this function always return a random number. The value uh, range is either zero, one, or two. So right now it's two. So we are about to execute this this time. Can you hand is two? Is two exactly equal to zero? No. So we came to the else pass. But in the else pass, we set up another if condition, right? So we will check this condition. Can you hands is exactly equal to one? No. Else. So we came to the else pass. So initially, PCB computer, you see, module cursor here, is none, right? Image is none. There is no image appear in in that picture box. So we are about to set its image from the thesis. So that's it. So we cannot remove this breakpoint and keep our code in round to end. So right now, user press thesis there. So again, if I click again, change the press hand, and then evaluate again. OK. It does not flash, right? But it's OK. We, we can see it press again. So we change it and then hit it against this thesis. Uh, evaluate again. Evaluate again. Evaluate again. Evaluate again. Evaluate again. So we can see the previous hand will be changed uh, once you hit the button once. Okay. So probably we should erase the image right somehow or once once everything is done. So probably it's once you use a press hand. First, change his hand, right? We had better erase this image to sh to illustrate that the user is about to create a new game. Okay, to make the uh, user interface uh, more uh, fluent, anyway. Uh, otherwise, it seems that computer has pressed his hand. It's the logical wise is not correct. So okay, it's fine. So in that case, once the user change uh his hand, then we will uh, erase the image of the computer hand somehow to make the, the user interface more uh, fluent. So well, this is function, right? So once the user click uh, either image, so user has changed his hand, right? So it's, it's about the time we PCB computer that image reset into non. Okay, now it's a keyword. Let me erase it. So, in these three parts, we always edit. So, I add a comment to this line. Hi. Current display of computer's head. Anyway, that's it. All right, all right. So the user interface will be uh, look much more consistent. So use a quick hand, right? Quick change it, change it. All right, it's about the time we evaluate. Okay. 
So right now we know, well, uh, the player won, right? Player win the game. So the logic is not not complete yet. So one will the counter will be added by one, right? Okay, never mind. So this user interface again, we are about to play the second game. So once the user changes changes hand, you see we erase it. So we are about to cast a new game. So users okay. So once the user has uh, pressed ha his hand, then we will evaluate the result. So computer press hand right now is tied is tied. Next game, so it, it will be erased. So in this way, the user interface is more meaningful. All right, all right. So we continue our logic. So up to this point, computer hand has been cast correctly, right? So we will evaluate who. Who win or who won? Okay. So the same logic can be copied from your from your code in the uh, console project right here. So you see we have uh, logic right here, right? If player one blah 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 blah, that's, that's it, right? If player one equal this one equal to one, so we kind of uh, copy this part back to our program.cs. We paste it to here. If player's hand equal R and equal to as complete, we have console right line, right? Detail U1, right? But we know we don't need to uh, display the detail information because you see the picture, right? You know who won, who, who win. We don't need to display that. But we, we, were, we probably we should have shown up, indicated that the user the user, uh, the player, one, right? Okay, so we like to show up a guy here. You won, you lost, you lost, tied, right? Okay, how can we do that? Well, uh, in your form, probably well, it's totally up to you. If uh, we, I can do that. Well, I can, I can prepare a label just in the middle of this window. And initially, it is it is invisible, and once this button is clicked, then it will dis it disappear. It is uh, it appear saying that uh, you won, you lost, tied. Okay. All right. So in in that case, or oh, probably you might. Uh, okay. Maybe I will, this time I will show you. Uh, well, forget that. Probably I just add a label right here. Okay, so back to the design. I drag in a label. So label three will specify its property. Text uh, doesn't matter, but I change the name because in coding we need to do SSA, so we call it a label result. Okay, and and what and uh, auto size again similar to this label. Auto size has turned into the force, and then. Kind of prepare uh, text line center. Put in there, right? How about the font? Uh, font probably I will use different kind of font. Probably if I choose the Chinese uh, Weibei, okay, and the size put into a larger one. Seventy two. Okay, and put in here. Okay, put in here. Uh, make it smaller. 
make it appear here. No. Oops. Oh, okay, I'm probably put it here. And I have better specify back color and full color for it. So back color I might use uh, red and uh, full color into uh, white. Okay, all right, all right. So this guy, the name is label result. So label result will appear when evaluate is clicked. All right, fine. So uh, initially, you, you see, initially there is a property called visible. Okay, let me let me, let me run the code for uh, to see. Okay, something wrong here. Our code, if com your comparison fail, then you go to the uh, L windows, click on the first L. Intelligence will help you see. We we have not. Okay, we, let me just let this come in now. All right, so here. So there is a property called visible. If it is set to the false, then this guy will not appear at all. But right now, the visible. It's true, right? So if you run the run your application right now, label has shown up there, right? Uh, it is not the intention we like to have. So you just initially set the visible into the force. So run your code again. The this label does not appear. Okay, label has been hindered, right? So once the result came out, we like to make this guy visible and change the text show the text as you won you lost tidied that is the purpose we intend to to set up okay so since the result came out right now uh, uh, it's prayer one so we just uh, put you want into where we said you want into this label label result dot text Right, so we are indicated that you want, and we like to it. We like it appear, right? So we need to set the property label. But actually, is everything there? Because so uh, at the end, at the end, we will make this label result uh, shown in the uh, in the form visible. Set it to true. Excuse me, T I U E, T I U E, thirty two. So the logic turned out to be like that. You kind of check, uh, identify the win case, the one case, right, and loss case, and tidy the case, update counter, right, update counter. Okay. So similarly, let me uh, go back to the uh, uh, to the console project right here. So. This is the loss case. Carpet. Back to form one. Loss case. But this time, try to wrap up everything. So I add uh, this guy. Or, or this part. Or. In the third cases, right parenthesis. So then I can leave out these two conditions again. So for these three cases, either one true, then the result of this if statement is true. Then we go to this place. So summary label text you lost. Right, the text you lost. How about type? Uh, this is the title case, right? Copy from one that's yes. 
Thai case. Again, you add another parenthesis. Move this part, copy, or this case, or so the case. Right parenthesis. Label result dot text equal. I mean not equal. Uh, we assign with this variable. All right. So it seems all right. Uh, so either one. I mean either one count or lost count or tidy count will be updated, right? And it's about the time we update, right? Update the display. Otherwise, you did not space right. You see, uh, so so after we space right the text or the label label shown up, so up to this point. So later we will in, we will call this function again. Display current score because right now on count has been updated, right? So we need to uh, change the text or the label score, right? So display score current score. So at the end, b before we leave this uh, function. Before we exit this button evaluator function, the last statement should be ESP display new uh, counts new in counts. So we directly call our function display you know, show. I remember the function name. If you forget the function name, you can check it here. For one class, right? And it's for one class. For one class, do have a function. Display current score. All right. Display current score. D I S P L Y. Okay. Internet has highlighted this function for you. Call this function. Okay, so let me set a breakpoint. Okay, so last time we hit it here. Alright, so put it here. So let us run our code again. So user press his hand and then evaluate. So evaluate. So up to this point, up to this point, computer hand has uh, been set. So right now it's zero. So prayer hand is rock. Computer hand is zero. So this is this is not the case. Prayer hand is rock. Computer hand is zero. Not this case. Prayer hand is rock. Computer hand is zero. So this condition will be true. Right? So we set the text or label result into tidy. Then update counted tidy the count counter. Then we show we show label result. Then we update. Okay, if I hit F11 key, we enter this function again. But much your cursor to check about one zero lost zero. How about tidy count? Kind of one has been updated by one, right? So the new information will be displayed on this uh, label text. Okay. They, the code run to the end. Type. So right now you see type. Well, it, it kind of obscure the picture image right here, so it's not okay. All right, so fine. So for the next game, user press hand, right? We erase it. So as you can see, well, once the user cast the new hand, we need to make this uh, label disappear to make it the user interface fluent, right? All right. So we go back to this code again. So once a user press his hand, paper, rock, or thesis, we change the PCB computer image to now, right? So also, we set label resolve dot visible into false. We kind of hide it. Hide the resolve. So we added this statement.
Okay, but we have better arrange uh, this up the, the outlook of this this game. So probably I should move it a little bit down here. Label. So in this case, uh, the label the, uh, does not block the image of uh, user and the computer. So I put it here, and the size I think the size is too large, so change it probably uh, sixty. All right, fine. Okay, so we start our game again right here. Initially, is is the visible property is false, right? So nothing showing up here. So prayer pressing ten, evaluate. Okay. Let the code keep running because we have a breakpoint right here. Tidy, right? Rock and rock. All right. So next game, user press thesis. The image of the uh, computer change it to none, and then we make this uh, the result disappear. Evaluate. You see, uh, user press thesis, right? But computers uh, press rock. So you lost, but it's too small, right? And the font size is too large, so you. So it's now okay. Again, we go back to here and then try to reduce the font size. So probably uh, forty-two. Uh, and probably we can arrange a little bit about the size right here. So as you can see, group box, group box is a container. So right now, group box, okay, once you click on the group box, you see this three picture box and the button uh, has been contained by this group. So it's a container. Let me special a little bit, evaluate. And probably change to here. And probably you should make some explanation to the to your prayer. So group box right here. You see, there's a text property here. So I said cast your Pen. Quick. Should I say quick? One hand. Anyway, quick one hand. Just tell your prayer. Quick one hand to press his hand. Okay, so use a quick on this guy. Change, change the hand, change the hand. Evaluate. You lost, right? Okay, so second game, again, again, steal, rock. You lost. Okay. Rock again. Type. Okay, it's so again. So now the game is running okay. So you won one times, lost two times, tied one. Alright, so hand. So if your next hand is steal hand, you can just click on evaluate. Type. Evaluate. Tight. Tighter four. One. Tight. Change hand. Evaluate. Okay, so your game is running okay right now. Alright, so I said about it. So our assignment just did you uh, try to ex exercise some uh, some statement about the C-sharp, so uh, that's it. I think that will be all. So next time, don't leave your application title as form 1 here. So the final job is that click on this guy, change a little bit about the title of your game. So we call it probably call it rock. by 
FC, for example, FC your name, ING, anyway. Okay, to make it more look more professional. Alright. Okay, so your game is running somehow. And you need to check all the cases to make sure the logic is correct. Alright. Uh, final, a uh, final. Uh, so let me uh, go to the uh, source code. So this is the source code, and right now since everything has been compiled successful, right? Okay, and this is the folder, and we have two projects, right? We have two projects. We have a folder to keep the uh, graphics uh, resource file here. Alright, so where is the executable file? The executable file is within the bin subdirectory. So we check about this one. Bin subdirectory, debug subdirectory, this executable file there. So once you double click it, uh, the console application has been running for you. So if we press raw, rock, computer sends rock, so it's tidy, tidy that has been added by one. Uh, paper. Player press paper, computer press rock, so you won. So one has been updated. Okay, so game is running, right? Uh, okay, this one does not have uh, continue, right? It's older version. All right, it's older version. Okay, and how about a Windows application? Windows application will be located uh, within this uh, project file. So this is the Windows application project right rock paper scissors game so similarly you you can find a bin subdirectory and also find a subdirectory debug this is the win application a secure provision so you can deliver this application to your friend and once your computer friend has done a framework then definitely it can run the game so this is your game application put it all right so everything is working all right so remember that your SQL file has been successfully generated and you can deliver your code to uh, to your friend to play it okay that's it